Welcome to another episode of Tech Bytes. My name is Chris Hillman and I'm the Director of Data Science in the EMEA region. So in this episode, I'm going to explain how to drive value from analytics and give you an introduction to analytics one, two, three strategy. Um, now the rest of the videos in this series are going to be very technical in nature. And there's going to be lots of code, how to execute the code, what tools to use and how to get the results back. But we're just going to here give you a very quick overview of the terminology and the components so that it'll make sense as we go through the rest of the series. So we've seen a huge amount of investment into advanced analytics, data science, AI, artificial intelligence, whichever way you want to call it. There's been a huge amount of investment in this area in the past few years. And I've pulled out this interesting quote from McKinsey, which is saying that despite this investment, senior executives tell us that their companies are struggling to capture real value. And the reason is they're eking out small gains from a few use cases and failing to embed analytics into all areas of the organization. So it leads us to a thing that we're calling ubiquitous machine learning. And the idea is that every area of the business is in some way influenced by a machine learning model. So whether that's for prediction, for decision making, whatever, it's there. And you need to then look at what kind of processes, what kind of infrastructure, what kind of tools you're going to have in place where you move from this way of project-based delivery of use cases into this overarching machine learning architecture. So here I'm picking out two specific points from Gartner Research, and these are that 80% of the time in any project is spent on data wrangling. And in that term, data wrangling, they're including all of those first phases of the CRISPR-DM projects, the, you know, the business understanding, the data understanding, the picking the right data, doing the feature engineering. And um, it's a huge amount of time spent on that part of the process. And the second point they make is that only 65% of models are actually deployed in production. Now that means that Without that production, you're not getting the value from all that work that's been done. So when we look at our analytics one, two, three strategy, we're really focusing on these two areas is access to good quality data and reuse of data and also a clear route to production. So let's have a quick look now at the analytics one, two, three strategy itself. And as you can see, we basically split the whole complex end to end pipeline of a machine learning model creation into three parts. And those three parts are number one, data preparation, the data wrangling we talked about before. Number two, model training and number three, model deployment, which is the scoring, the inference and all the model management and everything that goes around that. So we feel that splitting the process into these three parts gives us much more freedom and flexibility, much more control over the process and means that we can actually address those issues that McKinsey and Gartner picked out. So if you look at the data preparation phase where there's lots of work on data integration, feature engineering, cleansing, this is where we advocate the use of an enterprise feature store, which will explain more detail in latest episodes of Tech Bytes. In the, in the second part, in the model training, we advocate the use of the right tool for the right data scientist for the right task, which means we're not constraining people to say you have to use Python, you have to use Teradata algorithms, you have to use R, or in terms of tools, you have to use Databricks or SageMaker or Azure ML. We're basically saying you can be open. If you get part one right, in part two, you can be open to using the mod, the right tool for that data scientist for that task, which is very important. And then in part three, we're giving a very easy route to production. So we'll be able to take that trained model and that prepared data and produce scores at whatever regular interval you need in the right place. So having another look at this analytics one, two, three strategy, if we look across here, we've got the sections, the one data preparation, two model training, three model deployment. What do they give us and what's the point of these? So the idea of data preparation is that you get reuse of data, which gives you efficiency and a much quicker speed to market for new data products, new models. And what's involved in that first pillar is data integration, 
feature engineering and the building of an enterprise feature store. And really Teradata brings here experience with large enterprises and the technical sides of what we can bring is explained in later videos. If we look at the second pillar, the model training, basically we're really here all about flexibility using the tool that you need to use. And this gives you innovation because who can tell what is going to be the next big thing in data science tools in next year or two years time. Things are changing all the time and we can't lock ourselves down to a specific set of technology or libraries, which means we're open to all tools. And that means you can train with open source or proprietary tools once you've got the data prepared correctly. And it also means that you can use production data rather than having to use silos of data in, in other tools. And Teradata here brings insights. We have extensive expert expertise and many use cases for advanced analytics. And then finally, on the model deployment, this is where you get the value from advanced analytics. Uh, this is where you actually get the return on investment from an automated process. And this then will release the data science team to go back to the next project, to back to the data preparation, back to the training model for the next use case, because they can be assured that the model deployment is now automated and they haven't got to be involved in that process. So there's various things here we talk about bring your own model, which we'll explain in another series. And we talk about how to score models in production at scale and how to ha produce enterprise wide wide results. And really we've got extensive experience here in knowledge in end-to-end -end business processes. So some key takeaways from this overview is really that with Teradata, you can make AI work and you can make AI work at scale because if you want to enter this era of ubiquitous machine learning, you, there's a data problem. Basically, you need to have data at scale and fast and you need to do something as much as you can to address that 80% of time being spent on data preparation. And one of the answers to that is an enterprise feature store. Ubiquitous machine learning is also a scale problem. And how can you do this at scale? How can you have hundreds of thousands or millions of models in production and still keep a team under control? How can you release the data scientists from their production duties so they can go back to data discovery and model training and produce the innovation that they're there for? Um, there is no return on investment until you're in production. And this is different, obviously, if you're in, in an academic setting doing pure research. But for many of us who are in a business setting, you need to produce that ROI. You need to find that value. You need to find that cost saving or you need to find that way of increasing customer satisfaction. And finally, just to close out this short overview of driving value from analytics and the Teradata Analytics 123 strategy, Teradata has been recognized as a cloud leader in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for cloud database management systems. And Teradata has the highest scores in three out of four use cases in the Gartner critical capabilities for cloud database management systems for analytical use cases. Because we can offer production analytics at scale, the enterprise feature stores, we have the bring your own model functionality, we have analytic ops capability, and there's many, many ways to interact with Vantage using in database Python and R and our parallel R algorithms, which we are going to continue to show you in a much more hands on way in further videos. This concludes the Tech Bytes episode on driving value from analytics and the analytics 123 strategy overview. Thank you for watching and please do come back and watch the next episode on the detail of the analytics 123 strategy and also the follow on technical videos on the actual implementation. Thank you.